hello and uh, welcome to a road test of why you, that's right, you, should buy my 2005 BMW R1150 Adventure. So I've had this bike for a couple of years. Uh, before that I had a smaller 650 single, which was great. This has been a lot more generally kind of suitable for lugging yourself, a passenger, some luggage, whatever else you want about it. I've done the ABR festival a couple of times on it and it's been absolutely brilliant for that, uh, both getting there and for riding. It's really been good fun. I've seen some fresh air. It's quite a warm day today. It's been lovely. Um, so yeah, did the ABR festival a couple of times. It's great for that, uh, all your crap on the back, your tent and all that business. But it's that torque you get. This is why it's so good for two up touring and oh, that was nice, isn't that? Oh, cool bit. That kind of what gear you're in going up the hill it doesn't really matter to be honest. You've got so much torque at whatever part of the river range. Uh, so yeah, not that many miles. Around. I think I had it on about 48k, 49k, and uh, now it's on uh, just coming up to 54k. So yeah, I've done like 5,000 miles on it. Basically, that's all I've done in a couple of years. I've experience with these the brakes are very responsive so there's no one behind us so let's just give the brakes a quick go so oh yes so yeah that was very little pressure on my hand i mean they're not twitchy but they're strong when they need to be so you've got some very good brakes on this very very good uh complete polar opposites to my old 650 that was well the reason why i upgraded to this single disc rider heavy rider passenger luggage that single disc on the front wasn't very good on the f650 so yeah this is a lot more comfortable for that kind of thing with a passenger so i'm just going to take some nice little country lanes out and about here so did the advanced rider course on this um quite a few of the instructors had gs's or newer ones 1250s and so this is the only one with off-road tires <laughs> the only one with that was the adventure spec with all the adventure kit on it as well so yeah, it's. Uh, I know a lot of people with GSs. I don't know many people who <laughs> actually use them for what they're supposed to be used for. But by no means has this been thrashed. It's been pretty well looked after. Uh, so we'll go through the specs in a bit. Um, it's got all the bells and whistles. The, uh, I think they call them tobinators or something like that. It's these little brackets on here that allow you to have much better adjustability. The screen, it's got those on. I think if you don't already have them, you, I don't know where you'd even find them from. They're pretty much under Tanium, I think. Uh, similarly, it's got like proper Hella relay fitted uh, road legal uh, spotlights on the front. Well, they're more like floodlights, really. Probably wouldn't hurt if I told you some of the things that I've done to it in terms of maintenance. So as I say, other than oil changes, you know, engine, gearbox, final drive, brake fluid, nice service there. It's all good. As well as what came out wasn't dirty either. So the starter motor, the old starter motor was playing up a bit and it was starting to zap too much current. Uh, so I replaced the starter motor. All was well, but I think it also took the best out of the battery at the time. So I replaced the battery not long after as well. And ever since, starter no problem, battery no problem. Absolutely brilliant. You leave it sat for a few months over the winter when the weather's been horrible. You come back to it and you press the button. It's like you were riding it yesterday. It's absolutely brilliant. So no worries there. To be honest, other than that, I've not had to do a lot with it. The old brake light bulb, that's about it. So no worries there at all. Not a lot required and not a lot does require. It's got 12 months MOT, uh, no advisories. So we're all good there as well. So see in a minute, I've got the uh, proper OEM BMW luggage which again. If you haven't got that already, good luck finding them because, you know, it's, uh, it's been a great bike, really. I mean, um, you know, I'm not going to go off-road down here. This is a country lane. But, you know, once you are stood up on the pegs, you've got a lovely position. The weight's all down low because the engine's so low. So it's heavy. Don't get me wrong, it's heavy. But the weight's all down low. So it's not like it wants to topple over. And it's brilliant. It's really, really good fun. I mean, it, it is, as Lord Sugar would say, with regret that I've made the decision to part with it. Um, not an easy decision at all, um, but it's just coming to the realistic uh, conclusion that for some kind of like most of the off-road trips I want to do, compared with the relative rarity that I actually do go to up touring with luggage, I think that the balance has to shift towards something just a bit lighter, a bit more chuckable. There's a horse coming up here. I'm just going to uh, pull up further up somewhere, I think, and uh, I'll just pull up here actually two horses much easier than riding two bikes i presume i'm gonna stop it here
<laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'll give you a little while before I start again. Yeah, no worries. It does often occur to me that uh, how appreciative horse riding people tend to be when you're not the engine off. Um, doesn't sound like enough motorbike riders uh, tend to do it. I'm going to stay on. I tend to look and then pull out personally, but maybe I'm just old fashioned, I don't know. A bit boring, I suppose, isn't it, doing it that way around? Oh, I like that little cottage, that is nice, isn't it? Now, one thing that's really nice about this for off road is the engine braking. If you're going to do anything like that, or you're going down any uh, muddy sort of lanes or anywhere that you think, ooh, I want a bit of control here, the uh, engine braking is fantastic to the point where I've been going down like sort of dusty trail descents where I've had to add throttle because it's engine braking is that strong so yeah you've got a really nice level of control with that which means you don't have to go on the brakes all the time which is really good to have as well so yeah it's a, it's a really nice bike to ride um one I'm definitely going to miss um so yeah let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the specs and then we'll find somewhere nice to pull up and I'll uh Let's talk you through the bits and we can have a close look at what the uh, the accessories are like as well. Um, but yeah, so it's 1150cc. This is the exact same model as Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor went to London, ran the long way around to New York on, and they, they were riding them pretty much out the shop. In fact, I saw Charlie's bike at the BMW place at the road. <laughs> Not that long ago, and um, I had a close look. This is missing some of their accessories, like a welded frame. Uh, I haven't had to have that done, but there are things on this that are higher spec than their bikes because it was last minute. You know, they've been dumped by KTM quite unceremoniously, and they needed the bikes fairly pronto. So they sort of got them off BMW, changed the panniers for some slightly more rugged-looking Touratech ones added a few stickers pretty much and some cameras and off they went so they really are you know proven bike yeah it's brilliant you know it's just a good suspension you know everything feels nicely damped there's no issues there um takes the uh the sting out of the uh, the heavy bumps quite nicely i don't want to splash it with water it would have been a bit cruel wouldn't it um but yeah it's just a really nice bike to ride and you go around somewhere that's got lots of potholes like you know basically any town in the uk and you know you don't feel a thing it's brilliant so yeah it's a very nice bike to ride but then also with that, that weight down low you can really lean it over in the corners and not do it here not going fast enough but you know it's got a nice feel to it it's stable uh, but yeah it's just a very nice bike to ride and uh nice to go exploring somewhere where you don't know what the roads are going to be like but yeah, so 11.50 or 11.39 cc, I think, technically, or 11.30, whatever it is. They call it 11.50. Uh, Boxer Twin, so both pistons going outwards at the same time. Uh, pretty much BMW's thing. Uh, about 85 horsepower and uh, more torque than a chatty person from Wolverhampton on YouTube like myself. So, uh, yeah, as you can see here, I'm not too worried about changing down the gear there because you just don't need it so much torque all the way through the rev range that you don't feel like you're slogging it you can just uh, let it sail through it'll find its way into the right bit of the rev range and uh, find its way nicely over the bumps as well and because the weight's low i can use my, my feet here to uh to shift the weight around quite nicely it does not feel like a 260 kilo bike riding it like this it really doesn't it's fantastic for that so yeah, it, it's a uh, it's a he he with a heavy heart that I put this up for sale, but I think I know deep down, it, for me, it's the right thing to do. I just want to be a bit more chuckable, and um, yeah, so, so, so let's open it up a little bit, shall we? Say? So yeah, it uh, it rather shifts. Let's go for that bend there. Yeah, it shifts very nicely. Um, if you really want to overtake somebody. Um, you just <laughs> you just open the taps and do it, you know, just very comfortable, very rideable. You feel like you can just go anywhere you want on this thing and it'll, it, it's ready for it. It'll take you there. No worries whatsoever. In terms of specs, there's not a lot to say otherwise. Big 33 litre tank being the adventure model as opposed to 22 on the normal one. Let's just pull over here briefly. Hopefully no one will care too much. And um, have a quick look at the spec, shall we? Well, that's a nice cottage over there. There's some really nice houses around here. 
No pub though, so count me out, you know. Right, so here we are. This is the uh, bike itself. So let's have a quick look over it then, shall we? So we've got our big boxer twin down here. Big, uh, that's big engine there. Pulls beautifully, runs very nicely, starts no issue whatsoever. Big F off brakes at the front here. Got a nice headlight guard that's fitted. Got a big adventure screen with the uh, little brackets here so you can give it a bit more up and down, left, right, you know, well, not left, right, but you know, forward, backwards, up and down, and tilt kind of adjustment. Hella headlamps as well, which are or fog, uh, fog lamps as well, which are great in there. Wired up via relay into a little switch on here. So when the ignition's on, just knock those on or off. And away you go. Uh, I'm not including the quad lock, I'm afraid. They're going to be a bit stingy. Um, I'll keep that bit on the next thing, um, but I will leave the aluminium uh, wiring from Cosmo.de. They're about 50 euros or so, but it's a really nice made bit of kit. Um, just bent to the right angle, that sort of thing, so you can get a uh, sat nav with these bolts, or it's a standard marine spacing, so you can put any old thing, quad lock do things for them. You'll get any old bracket there. I say brake fluid um, has been flushed out, or came out very nice and clean, so uh, that's all great. Uh, luggage, I've got some of that. So there's our OEM panniers, a little bit of straw in there. I'll throw the straw in for free. Um, these are all in very, very nice nick, uh, other than a few stickers, whatever. Um, these lock and they're keyed up to the same key as the ignition, so no problem with that. This is for a couple of bottles here, and we've got another one on this side for, um, I think it's a Touratech uh, jerry can. Let's say oil's been done every year. Uh, it's done late last year, so it's, it's alright for a bit. Uh, final drive oil as well, as well as the gearbox. The final drive, I've never had any bits of metal in that whatsoever. It's always been uh, absolutely clean. To be honest, you take the gearbox and the final drive oil out and it, it's as clean as the day it went in. So you sort of wonder why I'm bothering, but it, it's the right thing to do. Alright, the seat. So the seat is uh, it's the original base, um, but it wasn't, it was a bit ripped. And it wasn't comfortable for my arm and back because Unlike normal seats where it goes up at the back, this actually kind of goes down slightly, it just goes flat. So she had basically no padding. The seat was a little bit narrower here. She had no padding at all. And when I open the taps to go overtake somebody, she gets thrown backwards a little bit and you don't want that. So we went to a professional seat reupholsterer who, uh, with all this in mind, added the padding here, added the padding on the top, flicked it up a bit at the back, uh, and then did this basket weave stuff to keep it in grip. So, uh, so your knees can grip the seat when you're off-road, give you a bit more control. All these bells and whistles, let's go through some of the extras that have been fitted by previous owners and myself. Um, so first of all, we've got these tank protectors here. There's some Touratech uh, tank protectors here, so if it does go over, which to my knowledge at least it hasn't, um, but that'll help stop the tank getting dented. Uh, the OEM uh, aluminium crash bars are on here, got the, uh, the bash guards here. Um, otherwise, yeah, we've got plenty of nice stuff. The, uh, well, this was standard on the Adventure model at the time, is the braided hoses front and rear, but that's nice, at least they'll last a bit longer like that. We've got a Touratech branded steering stop here. So I said about the uh, headlight guard over there, and the, of course, the fancy luggage. It's also got a nice uh, wider fitting on the rear brake, which is great, and of course these pegs aren't standard either. So these are uh, SW Motec, what they're called, and I do have somewhere the, uh, the little rubber pads that go on top and they bolt in a little 10mm bolt. That's quite nice as well. If you can do a long road journey, you can just put those on. One other thing to note, actually you can see one of them just over here. One thing that these do, what have been known to suffer with in the past, is the uh, the quick disconnects you get there. That's the low pressure one that links this lobe of the tank to the other side. Um, and then there's also the two high pressure lines. They have like a male and female uh, plastic quick connect and they tend to break over time. What happens is the male one breaks inside the female one, so when you take the pipes off and they just leak fuel everywhere. Uh, this has been uh, done. A uh, previous owner did the high pressure lines. They replaced it with uh, metal fittings like those that shouldn't break. And the low pressure line, it happened to me. I had to put my thumb on the hose and get someone to help, um, but replace the plastic with uh, metal uh, quick disconnect. So now if you take the tank off and you disconnect everything, it's, it's all metal, so that shouldn't cause you any, any problems. But again, that's not cheap. So all of these things, the Touratech stuff, the disconnects there, the luggage, if you can even find it anymore, the pegs, you know, it all's about. So yeah, it's all very nice spec, very well looked after, just say. Coming up to 54,000 miles there, and uh, everything is uh, in really nice order. Everything's all great. 
so yeah that's the spec of the bike so we're out right with this of course any questions you know comment get in touch if you want if you're interested in it all right well let's get back on the road give it another blast and i don't know, don't know what to say to you i'm just enjoying the ride so let's go have a bit more of a blast and um see what we think have a listen to the engine and uh if you're interested in buying this very nice example of a 2005 GS Adventure, get in touch and we'll uh, have a chat. So yeah, I've left my uh, other camera over by where we just stopped up here. Hopefully it's still there. And hopefully it'll record me doing a nice uh, whiz pass now. Quite nice standing up here. I can see a lot further over the hill than I could otherwise. Right, it's just down there. Oh, that was nice. I enjoyed that. <laughs> right, let's go back and get it. <laughs> I don't know how people do this and on like uh, big, you know, thousand mile adventures on motorbikes and they, uh, you keep seeing do ride pass shots, but you know they're on their own. <laughs> How do they find the patience to keep stopping, going back, pick the camera up, go along, stop, set the camera up, go back, ride past, stop, turn around, ride back, get the camera. It, it, it's enough just doing it for this little video, but uh, I guess you just get into the swing of it or something, I don't know, but... Um, oh well, all good fun. <laughs> Do some fuel at some point before things running out. Went to my uh, aunt's in Kent at the weekend. That was really nice. Went on this. Uh, it turns out from where we are, Kent's a lot more motorway than I'd hoped, which I'm not a fan of motor on the on the bike. I mean, it did it fine. This bike's really good. You can see, you can be seen for a bike at least. You know, people like. But you can be seen very well. You can see very well. Of all the bikes for the motorway, it's good. You can keep up with and overtake a lot of the traffic. You know, no worries with the bike. I just don't enjoy it. You know, you're on the uh, on the motorway. You're sat there doing whatever speed you're doing into the wind. It's loud in a straight line. Also, you're not doing anything exciting. I'm just bored. I wish I was in the car. As soon as you get to the twisty road, straight away I think, all right, forget the car. I want the bike now. <laughs> So yeah, we took a nice scenic route back, which turned out to be a lot, a lot longer time-wise, but more enjoyable. But, but yeah, I mean, the bike the whole way there, the whole way back, totally uh, flawless, brilliant. Um, really did the job well. So yeah, it's only really for my odd use cases that I'm thinking, yeah, it's time to change, but it is with a heavy heart. Deep regret and all the things Alan Sugar would say, it is with sincere regret you're fired it's certainly not an easy you know week one what a bloody mess you're fired type thing it's very much a final five whittling down look i'm very sorry it's just not quite what we're after for me personally but i wish you well stay in touch and all that so you know yeah i wanted to go to a nice owner who will treat it very well I'm not, you know, looking just to sell it quickly or anything like that. It, it's got to go to the right person. It's always to be looked after. A bit like with the Alpha. You know, the Alpha, when I sold the Alpha Romeo, I didn't want to tell it to some hooray. I found somebody in the end who was really excited about it. And that, that meant a lot. So that's really what I want with this. It's been a brilliant bike. Done me very proud, done me very well. And uh, somebody else is going to have a great time with it. It really is a brilliant, brilliant bike. So for now, and that's it. That's all I'd say, really. Um, yes, I will be listing it on some of the BMW forums and maybe eBay if it comes to it. But um, see how we go. And otherwise, yeah, if you're interested at all, drop me a line. I'll have a chat. Brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this also helps if you're looking to buy one of these as well. You know, if not this one, but you come across it maybe after I've sold it or something. I hope it gives you an idea of what these things are like and what they sound like and all that. It is really good. Uh, I would definitely recommend this to anybody looking for this kind of adventure bike. And if you're buying one later on, you got any questions, just drop me a comment. You know, I'm happy to answer any questions in general. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you, or you'll see me in the next one. Cheerio. Thank you.